See? Tell your neighbor right now, he's not talking about me. <laughs> See? So that's what the devil tries to do. And he's saying, uh, maybe it's good to eat in this restaurant, you know? Or, you know, it's going to be traffic later. Maybe it's good to go to another place and have lunch there. Or, uh, what movie are we going to watch later on? You know, all these things to try and rob you of your focus and your concentration. See? So go ahead and just uh, nudge your neighbor right now. See? Say, makinika. <laughs> See? Now, look at this. Having heard, they did not understand. So now the devil comes to steal the word. See, that's what the devil does. He came to steal the word. So what's happening now? Our ability to believe is hindered. It's hindered. Now the other kind of soil is shallow soil. In other words, they receive the word with joy, but being shallow, in other words, they're not willing to keep on moving forward with Christ. These are the ones who draw back why? Because of a little persecution, the Bible says. A little persecution. Talking about the sun. It dried up the plant. Why? Because there was no depth. There was no depth. And what happens? The word is also stolen. And they cannot move on because the per there, there's a fear of persecution. Okay? And that's also the devil's job, to try and hinder you from moving on with God. The third kind of soil is the thorny soil. So here's a soil that received the word, understood it, started to grow, but they get distracted easily by the cares of this world, by the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. You know, they, 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 instead of moving forward, they're so concerned about money. Now, you know what? Some of you here are called to be kingdom financers. Okay? In fact, let me be so bold to say, if you're part of this church, most of you are called to be kingdom financers. Okay? Amen. Amen. Why do you think? You know, some of you are saying, you know, I really would like to be a kingdom financer. I can't even finance myself. I don't even know if I can put food on the table. You know, why do you think the devil is hitting you so hard in that area? It's so that you will be concerned about this thing and then pull back and say, maybe I'm not called to be that. See? I was listening to a, a preacher, actually my wife was, and she got so excited, she made me listen to a certain portion. I was listening to Chuck Missler, and he talked about uh, the Philippines. In his, um, when he was talking about a particular topic, talked about the Philippines, but his focus was more on the economic crisis in the Philippines. He says, why do you think the devil is hitting the Philippines so hard in the area of their economy? It's forcing people out of the country. In, uh, where is it? Saudi? In Saudi Arabia alone, there are 900,000 Filipinos about half of them are born-again Christians. Can you imagine the kind of influence that we will have on the young children of the Arabs and the sheiks and uh, you know, all of that as they share their Christian values? See? I mean, God is up to something. This country will not be poor forever. You watch. This country will not be poor forever. See? A time is coming, and I believe that we are at the labor pains of it right now. I mean, this country is about to give birth. Amen? This country is about to give birth. Now, the thing is this. Amen. Now, that was a good place to say amen. Amen? Now, the thing is this. You are part of that. See, you're part of that. See, if... Wherever your calling is, that's where the devil will hit you the hardest. See, the devil doesn't care that you do good works as long as you're outside your calling. As long as you're outside your calling. You know why? Because in your calling is where you will be most effective. In your calling is when you are most dangerous against him. 
in your calling is where the blessing is. The manifestation. See, the Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes you rich. See? God has a call on your life to maximize you. Every potential inside of you, every gift, every ability, every talent will be maximized. It will bring you joy. The reason why so many people are bored is because they're doing something that is not part of God's call on their lives. That's the only reason why people get bored. There are too many things to do. And people are still bored. Why? Because they're not maximized. There are too many parts of them that are not being utilized, so they get bored. What we need to do is to come before Him and say, Lord, what is my calling? Don't be afraid of it, because all the plans of God are never to harm you. Always to prosper you, that you might have hope and a future. Amen? So His plans are always good. You can't go wrong following Him. Here's a little bit of good news. Not all of you are called to be a pastor. So don't worry. You know, some are saying, wow, the only way to serve God is to be a pastor. You know? you know what? Some of you here, most of you, I think, have stage fright. Right? Most of you do. If you have stage fright, chances are your calling does not include being on stage. Now, if you have abnormal stage fright, chances are your calling is to be on stage. And the devil is using it to keep you away from the stage. That's what happened to me. Abnormal stage fright. I would rather fail my recitation than to stand in front of my class to recite one stanza of Invictus. There's a new movie coming up, by the way. Morgan Freeman, right? Invictus. Good movie, I think. So he came to disarm the powers of the devil, set us free. And finally, he came to save. He came to save. This is what I love the most. Amen? He came to save. Amen. There's nothing much to say here except Luke 19.10, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Let me just show you a couple of things here real quickly. The word seek means, among other things, to demand something from someone. To demand something from someone. And this has, this is a double-edged sword. He came to demand us from the devil because we belong to him. That's what Ephesians chapter 2 says. We belong to him. He was our father. Until we are in Christ, we belonged to the devil. So he came and demanded us from the devil. And you know what? The devil couldn't do squat. The devil cannot hinder your salvation. It has been planned. It has been predestined way before even your great grandmother was born. God pre-planned your salvation. And the devil could not do anything about it. Because he is the author and the finisher of our faith, of our salvation. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. His salvation starts with God and it ends with him. And he also, by the way, maintains it. See, you know what we're called to do?